First question is always the hardest and it's the one you always get. Why did you make this decision to join this field and run for mayor of New York City? I'm running for mayor because I wanna bring change that is met with incredibly bold, progressive agenda and bring relief to so many that were impacted by COVID. Uh, what I've seen uh, has called me to action. Uh, I'm someone who grew up in public housing, single mother, and really understand what families are going through right now. And as an experienced elected, elected official, uh, only one of three of the many candidates that are running, we're gonna need someone that understands how, how to move legislation, how to negotiate a budget, and how to bring relief to some of the most vulnerable New Yorkers that are experiencing uh, so much in this pandemic. That experience in city council and as an elected official, how would that help you in that transition to the leader of the city and in obviously in a different part of city hall? We know that New Yorkers want experience for the next mayor. And part of that is connected to the fact that the next, the next city council uh, is gonna be a brand new city council. We're gonna need a mayor that understands the power and the respect of a city council to bring ideas from neighborhoods to be able to respond to the city agencies. That has been my work in Sunset Park and Red Hook as District 38's council member for the last seven years. We are bringing seven new schools. We defeated a, 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 essentially a luxury mall development in industry city uh, through a Euler process. And we really wanna ensure that the essential workers, the essential workers who are many uh, public housing and immigrant workers uh, are, are held to the highest standard in the next recovery uh, plan. That is my job uh, right now as a city council member and that will be my job as mayor. What do you think of the job that Bill de Blasio has done as mayor and what would you do differently if in that position? I've been a critic of this mayor since I was elected. Uh, when I came in, we realized very quickly that the work of the city agencies was not connected to the ground. And so what that means is community members have ideas, have plans and need very specific things. City agencies are there not to bring their own agenda, but to understand the community agenda and fulfill it, whether it's parks, whether it's trash pickup, whether it's schools and building new schools because they're overcrowded, all those things need to be at the, at the forefront of our city agencies. That is the, the spirit of my organizing uh, background that I'm gonna bring as mayor. Let's get into some of the issues here. And of all the, of, there are so many issues that a lot of these candidates are obviously talking about. Everybody seems to have different things they wanna focus on, which is good because there are a lot of issues I think that New York City needs to deal with going forward, moving forward. One of the ones you are dealing with and have dealt with as a council member is immigration and what's been going on regarding the situation in your district and here in New York City overall. How would you deal with immigration as a, in general here in New York City and the issues that uh, are, people are facing? One of the things that's really important and through the experience as the chair of the immigration committee in the city council, I've learned that the federal government has a big role to play in how we bring relief. What I also know is that it's gonna take the city to ensure that that relief comes directly to families that have been impacted. Essential workers today who have been dying at higher rates than everyone else are undocumented many and some of them do not have access to the stimulus that's on its way. The city needs to fill that gap. I have a plan to bring a universal basic income uh, a pilot to immigrant families that are starving right now at home. Uh, the folks that call me at my office are sometimes weeks without any new uh, groceries uh, in the refrigerator. That's the kind of, of urgency that we have right now. And I don't wanna wait until 2022 when I become mayor, we gotta do it now. And so I'm asking New Yorkers to join my call for a universal basic income pilot for those who are left behind by the federal government. Your call for UBI is similar to uh, several other candidates, including candidate Yang. Is, is, does your plan differ in any way? Are there any differences between your plans for universal basic income from some of the other candidates or is it all basically the same idea? No, this is different. The universal basic income ideas that were brought up by other candidates, really think about this as a removal of other safety nets what I wanna do is add to the safety nets of families. Uh, that's what makes us not only different, but important and urgent for New Yorkers to step up and support 
their neighbors who are left behind by the federal government as uh, a new administration uh, comes. Now, we know that Biden wants to build a pathway for citizenship. We just had a hearing this week that revealed so many barriers, language access, lawyers, documents that are gonna have to be pulled together to ensure that everybody that is eligible for whatever program comes is eligible. That's the job of the city. And that as mayor will be my number one priority to bring citizenship to uh, thousands of New Yorkers. You know, bringing the city forward as far as uh, dealing with environmental policy is something else that everybody's been bringing up. We've heard a lot about climate change and you, I know, are a big proponent of what's been going on, obviously, in your district with the wind uh, farm that's going to be on the way, as we heard from Governor Cuomo. Obviously, I see behind yes. you Green New Deal. It's a, t it's a phrase we hear a lot, and it seems like everybody has a different interpretation of what a Green New Deal actually is. So what is your thoughts on bringing a Green New Deal here to New York City and trying to bring us forward into the next century? In Sunset Park, we are celebrating the offshore wind uh, uh, project that's coming with thousands of jobs to Sunset Park. That's a project that we've been working on for a long time. We need more of that. This city has its own obligation to bring a version of the Green New Deal. We can't wait for the federal government that's still debating this. We can do it now. Using the capital budget, the city can borrow billions of dollars to bring infrastructure and rebuild NYCHA infrastructure resiliency projects on our coastlines and bring microgrids to ensure that power when it goes down can be, um, it can be resilient uh, because that will be the next disaster that hits. And there are so many families that are connected to vital uh, uh, healthcare infrastructure in their own homes that if we lose power, we will endanger so many people. That's what a Green New Deal will bring and uh, an economic boost for jobs in our neighborhoods. That is the commitment that I have uh, to New Yorkers as mayor. Carlos, what would be your, what are your thoughts right now on the current vaccine rollout and the way this has been handled obviously over the last couple of months and now moving forward and the way the city has handled it? There's no doubt that this started with, with terrible leadership at the federal government. Uh, President Trump did not want vaccines to go out to Americans. Uh, that allowed for the state and the city to trip on their own. What we need is massive access uh, and working with pharmacies and open air stadiums to ensure that everyone has access to vaccines that the president just ordered. So soon we will have uh, a lot of vaccine distribution opportunity, but the question is going to be, how do we get it out to communities that are non-English speakers, communities that are afraid of taking the vaccine? And so as the co-chair of the census task force, we brought in $40 million to um, bring in trusted partners on the ground. That is the kind of leadership that we need to be able to bring infrastructure and pay our nonprofits, our, 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 our leaders in our communities that can speak the language, that can have the trust. That's what's gonna allow this vaccine to get into our communities faster. Uh, and, and it's all about trust. Uh, in this public health crisis that we're experiencing. And with a vaccine, obviously that's one step of the recovery from the pandemic. The other being the economic side of things as small businesses have really been hurt badly by this pandemic and what's been going on. People just wanna get back to work. People would like to eat in a restaurant. I mean, these are things that people took for granted but now have not been able to do. What would be your plan for helping these small businesses in New York City if elected? Our small businesses are the backbone of our economy. There's no doubt that they bring more jobs than any other sector. Many of them are immigrants as well. And so all of my immigration policies are about supporting this, this, these families that are opening up businesses, that will open up businesses when the economy allows for a return to uh, normalcy. What I wanna do is bring resiliency to the small businesses so that if we are ever in a situation like this, we can return to outdoor dining in faster ways to bring the arts to our streets so that people can congregate safely outside social distance um, measures. The artists and the immigrants are the lifeblood of the city. If we lose them, uh, the essential workers that we have been depending on uh, will we'll, we'll, we'll create an even larger uh, crisis for the city. And the resiliency that I wanna bring to the economic um, the economic understanding of the city needs to change. We have to tax the rich 
uh, and bring those resources back so that we can stabilize our families uh, that are in our communities, that are starting small businesses, and that we need to keep alive. Council Member, another thing that the pandemic brought to light was the issues within the education system here in New York City, and obviously a great divide as far as what uh, students have access to here in the city in different parts of the city, especially in some of the outer boroughs where some students don't have access to Wi-Fi, students don't have access to digital devices, and those are needed in today's uh, learning environment. What, are, what would you do to improve the education system here in New York City if elected? There are three things that I think are really important, and I've learned that as a city council member representing a community that uh, is, has been asking for more resources to their schools. One, we need to build more schools. Our schools are overcrowded. And in those new schools, we need to ensure that they have everything that they need um, that we saw lacking, like air circulation, Wi-Fi access, and really build community schools that have, have opportunities to bring in uh, more healthcare infrastructure within the schools themselves and keep those schools open uh, even after hours to ensure that the community can use that space for, um, for the needs that they have in the neighborhood. The next thing I think that's really important is universal broadband. What we saw was a universal access to broadband. What we saw were families at home not being able to access their classrooms. And so what I wanna do it, as part of the Green New Deal for New York City is actually build out a network that can be accessed by families at home so that everyone has access to, uh, to Wi-Fi, to broadband. And that is one of the biggest hurdles to get people connected to their educational experience if we ever have to go back to a pandemic, um, uh, a, chem a pandemic mode. Fair enough. Uh, you know, the other issue obviously that came up with this, and obviously we're talking about access to, to broadband and things, but you saw an issue that's been brought up time and time again here in New York City, and that's affordable housing. And you saw that people just need places that they can afford to live in, truly be affordable housing. And especially this was an issue with public housing in NYCHA. How would you address that problem moving forward? Because it's something that's not going away. So housing has been tricky for New Yorkers, mainly because the leadership has relied on the private sector to build us out of this problem. That hasn't worked and it's not gonna work. We need to go in a different direction. We have been building shelters to shelter people who need shelter. We need to move away from shelters and actually build permanent supportive housing. How do we do that? We can take over hotels that are non-union right now and convert them to homes for single and, uh, and families. We can actually take commercial buildings and actually convert using less money uh, into housing. Those apartments will be the kind of injection that we need for people to get into permanent housing and stabilize families. Uh, and then bring all the supportive uh, resources that we have in the city, uh, like our healthcare system, telemedicine, and other things to ensure that people have the support they need to stabilize. With the Green New Deal, um, we need to also inject money into NYCHA. $32 billion is the price tag to get those buildings back uh, away from old, away from lead, and all the toxins and and uh, terrible living that families are, are experiencing right now. That's the kind of money we need to put in the budget right now to show New Yorkers that they can trust the government that they need to get them out uh, and into better quality of life. That's the commitment we need. And that will show the state and the federal government that we mean what we say, and that will bring more resources to the city of New York. That takes leadership. You mentioned the budget there, and the last time we all talked about the budget, the major issue was regarding the NYPD and their budget regarding how that money was going to be dealt with, and the term defunding the police came up, obviously. Uh, your feeling as far as police reform here in the city, obviously it's something that people are calling for and more community outreach. How would you address the issues involving the NYPD? The NYPD and the leadership has to not just change, but be transformed. Many community organizations have already worked on building a new infrastructure that not just takes away the incredible investments that have militarized our NYPD, but have given them incredible uh, uh, ability to get away with crimes that they are committing themselves as police officers. I'm talking about killings of, of, of New Yorkers. The accountability that the mayor can bring will allow us to fire officers, uh, beef up our CCRB, our, our, our civilian 
component of accountability and allow us to shift resources into communities. Because what we know is that when communities get the resources they need to be healthy, to be whole as families, uh, it reduces the need for anything that we understand right now as public safety. Uh, when you look at a uh, wealthy white neighborhood and compare it to a uh, community of color, uh, uh, what you, you see is a drastic uh, shift in investment from the city that needs to change. And because COVID has uh, really um, given us a light into this, uh, that's the commitment that I'm gonna bring as mayor. And that will begin to change and working with nonprofits that have already done so much work to combat violence, not through the use of police, but through community members, trusted partners, that's gonna help shift our dependency on what the NYPD has believed to be the way out of crime. Is that enough though, to deal with the crime situation that we're dealing with, especially you know in certain areas of Brooklyn where we saw gun violence really ramp up over the summer um, and people not really sure how to deal with that, whether it was community outreach, more police, less police, no, nobody seemed to know exactly what the best course of action would be. Is that enough as far as dealing with the violence we're seeing across the city or can more be done, should more be done? More should be done. And by more, I mean more for communities that are in need. What we are seeing is a massive increase in funding for NYPD over the last 20 years. It hasn't worked. We still have crime. How do we have more crime with an incredibly bloated NYPD budget? So if you just ask that question, it, it begs us to do something different. Imagine if people have a universal basic income so they can pay for their rent and not be worried about the next job so that they can take care of their families in a pandemic. Imagine if people had what they need um, at home to ensure that their kids had all the educational material that they need. That is what I'm talking about. That is the new vision for New York that I will bring as, as mayor, but that the communities have been demanding for such a long time. Our city is uh, a well-resourced city. It just is not, go it's not going to the communities that need it. That will be some time, will we'll, we'll take some time to, to shift, but that's the leadership that we're gonna need to be able to take the city out of the pandemic, recharge the, the economic, uh, situation that we're in right now and change the face of public safety uh, forever. All right, council member, two fun questions and then one serious question and then we're done. So here you go. First one, okay. and this, I'm, putting you on, I'm putting you on the spot here. So everybody, I don't know how you would feel about this. Okay. Here you go. What is your favorite, your, what is your favorite restaurant in New York city? What's your go-to? Uh, uh, Tacos El Bronco on fourth Avenue in Sunset Park. It's, it's when, whenever I'm in a, in a pickle, I want to, I want to go somewhere, but I don't know where I, that's my safe go-to. Uh, and I like the tacos They have an incredible, uh, uh, chicken soup. That's really, really amazing. Uh, and rice and beans. I mean, I, that, that is my staple. Uh, and that's it. That's a good choice. I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna have next time down in the area. It's a good one to know. I'll take um, <laughs> And I'll, I'll take you up on that. <laughs> and um, yeah, right. <laughs> what is a fun, well, give, me, give me a fun fact about you. Give me something that people don't know about you that I think you'd like people to know about you. Something fun about you. Fun. Well, you know, what, one thing I don't talk a lot about is that uh, I recently became a yoga instructor. And part of that was just something that I've uh, connected to for a long time since I was a high school student. And now as an instructor, I really understand the power of yoga in this time where meditation and connecting to the body has kept me sane, uh, as, as sane as possible. And, and, I, and I have a vision of bringing that kind of wellness and, and uh, practice of awareness to, to New Yorkers as we confront some very deep issues. And, uh, and I'm committed to my practice and uh, I welcome a, a growing community of New Yorkers that can connect to their body and their mind uh, through mindfulness. Very cool, very cool stuff. My mom is actually a yoga instructor. So I understand exactly what you're talking about as far as making oh, yeah. transition over and <laughs> going through. So I get that completely. Um, last thing That's for you, beautiful. It, it really is nice. It, it really is, it, it's really peaceful and it just, it brings you, brings you 
closer, I think, to what you where you want to be in your life. I think taking uh, being involved in that. Um, yes. Last thing for you, as you step forward here, we're talking about a field that is enormous. People are going to put five names on that ballot for ranked choice voting. Why? What do you want people to know about you when they head in there to cast their vote? What makes you stand out? What do you want people to remember about you when they go to vote for mayor? What I want New Yorkers to understand is that we need someone that understands government. I have seven years as a council member. I have the experience, but I also have the passion and the energy to confront this with all of you and will bring your ideas into spaces that have never heard your ideas. And then finally, uh, the field is wide open. And so keep your, eye, keep your hearts and minds open uh, listen to us, uh, check out our, our track record, our receipts, because you're going to need someone that has had the experience of, of courage against institutions that will fight us all along the way. I'm your fighter. Thank you.